think you can. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, thanks for the intro. My name is Matt Gowie. Uh, I run a consulting firm called Masterpoint. We are focused entirely on infrastructure as code, uh, specifically Terraform and OpenTofu. Uh, we've been working with those tools for many years, uh, since 2017, 2018, uh, and that's what we're good at. So today we're going to be talking about uh, migrating a client of ours onto OpenTofu uh, for speed and costs. Uh, and yeah, this is a lightning talk, so I'll be trying to be quick. All right, um, so quick background. Uh, our client was Power Digital. Uh, they are a marketing firm. Uh, they help their clients with ad spend, marketing, boring topics that we don't need to talk about, right? Um, our, our focus, uh, their, their platform's focus uh, required that they had segregated data for the different clients that they were bringing on. They were running different workloads. They wanted to house that data separately. To do that, what they set up was one single Terraform root module. When I say root module, you can think a state file. Uh, that enabled them to provision the infrastructure for their client uh, individually each time uh, they added a new client. Um, they ran this in Terraform Cloud, and it was a means by which that their as they added a new client into their, their agency, they were provisioning new, new resources, and it was, you know, that was their workflow. They had hundreds of clients, and this was very successful for them for a long time. But they started to hit some serious problems. Um, they ran into the dreaded Terralith problem. Who here has heard that term? Terralith. Couple hands. Okay, cool. Um, we have a blog post about it, if you're interested. Uh, Google what is a Terralith, and you'll find uh, our blog post. Uh, but a Terralith is a state file that grows too large. You run into various problems with that. You run into blast radius issues. You run into your plan and apply times running too slow. You, you run into the issue of, hey, I can't do principle of least privilege to enable one person to be able to act on parts of the infrastructure and another person to be able to act on separate parts. So Terraliths are something that we deal with as a consulting firm a ton. The challenges that Power Digital was running into were very unique and interesting. They had really taken Terralist to a next level. They had over 40,000 resources in this one state file. It was insane. Um, that caused Terraform Cloud to break, so their automation was continuously um, running out of memory. Uh, it wasn't really Terraform Cloud's problem. It was really, hey, they had this, this, this large, large state file, and that was causing a 50% failure rate. This delayed their business operations where they were trying to add new clients, but boom, their, their automation broke and they then needed to go and spend engineering hours to do targeted applies, run it from their local machines, do all these things that really caused them to slow down and not have continued success with this Terraform automation that they had running. This required over 60 plus hours of engineering time per month is what, what they came back to us and calculated, which was is staggering. You know, If you think about that, that's absurd. So they looked at this problem, and they really wanted to deal with it um, the simplest way that they could. So they, they went to Terraform Cloud and said, hey, we want to upgrade. We want to try and fix this problem. Terraform Cloud come back, comes back to them. HashiCorp comes back to them and says, hey, you're on an outdated pricing plan. Uh, we do resource-based pricing now, and you're looking at a 10x cost increase to run the same workload um, and get this problem fixed for you. And that was unacceptable to them. They kind of were in this you know, state where they were like, hey, what do we do? We need to do something different, right? So that's where they called us in. This is what we do. We kind of came in and provided our expertise. And what that looked like was we did an audit. Uh, we kind of came in and looked at their code, kind of got a really good understanding of, hey, why is this a struggle? What's happening under the hood? What is the, what's core to this use case that's really you know, giving them problems? Um, and from that audit, what we came up with was three suggestive implementations. Um, we wanted to get their Terralith broken up. We wanted to break that large state file of 40,000 plus resources and split that into various resources per client. We wanted to get them onto a tacos tool. We've heard that term a couple times, but that's the various uh, Terraform Cloud as a taco, Space Lift, M0, Scalar. They're all really great, um, but we, we have some really good experience with Space Lift and we wanted to migrate them onto Space Lift. And then finally, we wanted to migrate them onto OpenTofu. And we'll talk about that towards the end. Uh, after all of those things, we said, hey, let's do some training, let's do some knowledge transfer. So as we implemented this solution, we did all of this for them, we got some really awesome results, right? So 
first thing out of the gate, that 10x cost increase, um, we kept that in control, right? Their projected uh, cost increase on Terraform Cloud was going to be $5,000 a month. Uh, their costs are now less than $500 a month. Huge win. Client was extremely happy. Really great things going on there. Um, increased reliability. They no longer had these horrible 50% failures. Um, like they, they didn't have to go into their system and say, hey, why is this continuously causing me problems? Why are we not getting new clients in the door? Why are we slowing down the business. That increased their operations where new, on, new client onboarding was no longer a bottleneck. They, when we started with them, we had, I think they had 400 clients in this single root module. When we ended the engagement, two and a half months later, two months later, we were at 600 plus clients. I don't know how, where they're getting clients, they're doing great. Um, but they no longer had that as a bottleneck and that was something that was so critical to them operating as a business. Uh, finally, we had improved import performance by breaking up this Terralith and being able to enable them to do um, separate plan and applies for each client that they were adding into their system. We went from, it took 25 minutes to do a plan and apply down to three minutes. And that is close to 10x. So we did a 10x cost increase and speed increase close to 10x. You know, can't always win on an order of magnitude, but you can get close. Um, so I want to talk about why was open tofu critical here, right? Uh, our client came to us and they were saying, hey, we're worried about this. We, we see that we would need to upgrade to Terraform Cloud and 10x our costs, um, but we're not sure about open tofu. It's newer, it's, it's you know, this, uh, this new thing on the block, but we don't really want to be locked into Terraform Cloud either. Luckily, we have had experience at Masterpoint in upgrading some of our existing clients and doing some of our internal projects that we have going towards Open Tofu, and they took our expertise, they read some of our blog posts, and they really were able to take that um, and feel good about making this switch because the biggest thing about Open Tofu is it gives you optionality. It means that you're not locked into one provider, one set of way of doing things. And that's what really was critical. That's what enabled them to switch, what enabled them to like really get these speed and cost increases. So that is one success story for us. Um, super quick. I think I went even quicker than I have uh, when I've been doing this uh, you know, in front of the mirror. Uh, but yeah, thank you very much. Open Tofu's been doing really great. We're excited to see it happen. Um, and yeah, happy to take any questions. And feel free to reach out to me. I post about uh, infrastructure as code all the time on LinkedIn. So I'm always happy to chat. And uh, feel free to get in touch. Thanks, folks. Cool, we've got a question. Uh, yeah, so I have a quick question around, like when you're dealing with state, it could be really complicated to break up those state files. And it sounds like with the way that the client was doing things, they put everything in maybe the same Terraform config. Uh, every time they got a new client, it was just building up that giant state file. And while you could separate, out the, separate it, uh, break up the config, right? All that state is still tied together. And it sounds like those resources for the client were probably vital, right, that they were spinning up. So how do you go about breaking up such a large state file like that with what sounds like 40,000 some resources and you know, kind of stay sane and make sure the state files are getting to where they need to go? Uh, so what was the approach? If you this is, on? yeah, it's an awesome question. It's what we deal with like all the time. So it's, it's, it's fun. We've kind of gotten, we've gotten better and better at it. And you know, both Terraform and OpenTofu have gotten really good at it too because now we have the import block and we have the moved block and things of that nature. It's still hard to move things across state files. You still, in some cases, need to write scripts that will pull down the state file, pull out resources, move them to another state file, and then push those state files to their respective places. You can script all of that. What we like to do, what we prefer to do, if there is an import block, that's associated with all of the resources in the state, what you can do is you can just write uh, import code that you, you basically set up your root module, your, where you want the state to land. You can set up import blocks that are dynamic for each of the various resources that you want to import. And then you can run that import. And then you, you now have moved 
you've kind of duplicated state, right? Because importing doesn't mean that you now have the state from the original state file removed. It is purely that you now have it in a new state file. So you can kind of think about it from the perspective of like, okay, I'm gonna switch and import in state into all of my resource blocks, modules, all that stuff. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna either remove or, or get rid of this old state file. And that enables you to kind of do it in an automated fashion. When you're talking about 40,000 resources, we did it in very, very automated. We did it in chunks so that we could do it and feel very reliable about how we were making those changes. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, it does. And I actually kind of have a follow-up question. Sorry, I, I didn't. We're getting the, the sign in the back. I don't know if we're good to continue questions. Okay. We're out of time. Right. Find me afterward. I'm more than Finally. happy to chat with both of y'all. Um, thank you, folks. Really appreciate it.